Regardless of your stance on whether wild horses and burros should be rounded up off of public lands or not, the reality is there are thousands of wild horses and burros that have already been rounded up and are waiting to be adopted. This video is to help inform those on the process of adopting a wild horse or burro. If you're interested in the Adoption Incentive Program, where you get $1,000 to adopt, stay for the whole video. I'll cover the updated terms and tell you why doing it for the money doesn't make any sense. Also a disclaimer, adopting and training a wild mustang or burro is not for the faint of heart. It's also not for the hard-hearted, or for anyone trying to make money flipping animals. It's also nothing like working with a domestic horse. I would say that 99% of people who say that it is have never worked with an adult Mustang. It's also nothing like you've seen in the movies. A Mustang is not going to lay down and ask you to climb on its back like in the recent film Black Beauty. At the same time, adopting a wild Mustang or burro is amazing. It's challenging and wonderful, and it's also a huge privilege, and it should be viewed as such. These American icons deserve the absolute best that we could give them, besides, of course, the ultimate, which would be their stolen freedom. Now I'll jump off my soapbox and tell you how to do it. In this video, we will cover what to expect at an auction, how to apply, requirements for adopting a wild Mustang, bidding the auction and loading, the updated adoption incentive program, and how to find an adoption event near you. What to expect at an in-person auction. There will be signs as you drive up and you will see all types of trucks and trailers. The trailers you see here are mostly types that will be approved, but more on that later. Park and follow the signs in. Most of these events are held at an indoor or covered arena. You'll see about a dozen or so pens that hold the Mustangs and burros. Mustangs are sorted by gender and age most of the time, meaning mares and geldings will be separated. A lot of people think this is how Mustangs are always kept, but it's not true. They are only in these small pens during the weekends that auctions are held. As you walk down the aisle, you will see a lot of movement. You'll notice that horses are very scared of you and often try to shriek back as far as they can get away. At this auction, they had it set up so that you could be on both sides of the pens. This is great as far as viewing the horses goes, but it does cause a lot more fighting and nervousness because humans are on both sides of them. There's no corner or side that they can escape. During these stressful situations, horses get kicked, bitten, and slammed against panels. It's not uncommon to see injuries happen right in front of your eyes. In the wild, there's no such thing as a gelding, or at least not a man-made one. The males are all stallions and would never choose to be this close to other adult males. Those are pens where you'll see a lot of fighting and damage occur. Each pen has a clipboard on it with a list of the horses in the pen. The neck tags the horses are wearing help identify them. On this paper, you can learn about the age of the horse, the color, and what state it is from. This paper does not tell you which herd management area the horse is from or how tall it is. You can make a good guess on the animal's height by comparing it to the height of the panel. At all of the auctions I've been to, there has been a BLM trailer that's used as an office and tables. The tables are set up to fill out your paperwork and application. There's usually a very helpful BLM employee who can answer any questions and will sign off on your paperwork if you're there to adopt. How to apply. At the adoption event, you will fill out an application that looks like this. You can also print and fill it out before going to the event, which I recommend doing so that you can spend more time looking at the animals before bidding. They usually allow the public to enter two hours before the auction begins, but those two hours go fast. Whether you fill it out before or during the event, the application is the same. If you want a copy, I'll leave a link in the description box. Here are the requirements for adopting a wild Mustang or burro. I formatted it differently so it would be easier to read. Applicant must be at least 18 years. Adopted animal must remain in the United States until titled. An untitled wild horse or burro is the property of the United States. Applicant must have no convictions of inhumane treatment of animals. Applicant must provide a facility with access to feed, water, and shelter. Applicant must have a facility that meets the minimum requirements of 400 square feet per animal. Now on to fence heights. The height requirements are different depending on the age and the animal. Your fence needs to be five foot high for a yearling or a gentled horse of any age, six foot high for an ungentled horse two years or older, and four and a half feet high for a burrow of any age. There's a reason they have height requirements. If you're building a corral, please take this seriously. It's for your safety and the animals. I've personally seen horses plow through wood panels and I have seen them jump or get caught even on six foot panels. 
If your animal gets out, you are responsible for any damage they cause. In order to adopt, you also have to have access to an approved trailer. You must provide a stock trailer or a three horse trailer with a rear swing gate and covered top. The dividers need to be able to be removed or folded back. Slant trailers are acceptable. Drop ramps are acceptable only if there's an additional back gate to the trailer. The reason you have to have a rear swing gate versus just a ramp is when they go to load the horse, they can't be bending down to pick up the ramp. It's totally unsafe and a handler could get trampled. Two horse trailers are approved on a case-by-case -case basis and no one horse trailers are approved. After you are approved by an employee at the tables, you will then take your paperwork to the office trailer where you will turn it in and pick up a bidder's number. Hold on to this paper. Now that you have your bidder's number, you can spend the rest of your time checking out the horses and burrows. You might get to encounter a friendly one. My now two-year-old Zinfandel was one of these friendly horses at the auction I adopted her at. Now on to the auction. Before the auction begins, a BLM employee will explain the history of the Wild Horse and Burrow program. They'll explain why the horses need to be taken off the range and give you some numbers. Depending on what side of the argument you fall on, this speech will either be filled with facts or fiction. This lasts about 20 minutes. Now it's time for the auction to start. Hopefully you've got a strategy and a couple animals to choose from. It's simple from here. When they get to the horse you want to bid on, you raise your number in the air. The price will usually increase by $25 at a time, unless the animal is in high demand, and then they may jump by the hundreds to speed it up. Animals can go for any amount that somebody is willing to pay. At this auction, a yearling went for $1,600. Keep in mind, it is an auction, so the highest bidder wins. It's easy to get fixated on the horses with color, but take a look at confirmation and personality. Typically, the colored horses will go for a lot more, but you can get a great common colored horse for a good price. Whether you win in the auction or not, after they've gone through all of the pens, they will allow the other horses who haven't been bidded on to be adopted out at $25 or $125. $25 if you don't want to use the AIP and $125 if you do. This is on a first come first serve basis. Once you win an animal, you'll want to get in line ASAP. They will load the animals in order of the line. Plan on being there all day if you win a horse in one of the last pens. Now it's time to load. This is the most stressful part of the adoption event. The animals are already terrified, but they're finding safety in numbers. Now they will be picked off one by one and separated, loaded and headed to their new homes. The horse you see here is named Bob. Believe it or not, this draft looking horse is actually a Mustang. He's got the freeze brand to prove it too. They use him to sort the horses from horseback. I have seen the same crew sort and load horses at a dozen events, and they are very skilled at what they do. They try to use the least amount of pressure they can, but working with big, wild, and terrified animals is very dangerous. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm thankful for them and their experience. Even so, accidents happen. Fatal accidents happen. Horses get very afraid and can run into a panel or gate or try to jump a panel. It's an extremely stressful process for the horse and I imagine for the handlers. At this particular event, a baby horse that was being sorted ran into a panel and dropped dead on sight. It was horrible to see. I know different crews do it differently, but this crew always removes the neck tag for you. They don't want it to get stuck on something in your trailer or on your fencing when the horse gets to its new home. They will, however, put a halter on for you, but if you ask them if you should, they usually say they don't recommend it. Personally, I don't either, and I don't know any trainers that I respect who would. The only halter that won't break is a rope halter, but the problem with rope halters is they don't break. They are dangerous to have on an animal that doesn't know how to stay still if they get stuck. I have a friend who had a halter put on their horse, and as it loaded into the trailer, it got caught fell, and broke its neck. It died right there. On that happy note, let's move on to the money. The Controversial Adoption Incentive Program, or AIP, is where you receive $1,000 for adopting a wild Mustang. It has been conducted in various forms, but it has just recently changed, which is great. It used to be that you would get your first $500 within 60 days of adopting a wild horse and then the second $500 at the one-year mark if you had completed requirements and filled out the title paperwork. 
but now you don't get any money until the horse is titled. The BLM now requires compliance inspections of animals adopted under the AIP to occur within six months of adoption versus a year under the old AIP. Title applications will have to be signed by a vet or a BLM authorized officer in order for the adopter to receive the incentive payment. The incentive payment will now be made within 60 days after title date. So that means that you won't receive a penny for at least 14 months after adopting, which is great for Mustangs. It ensures that people who are in it just for the money aren't as profitable. And quite frankly, the cost of caring for a Mustang is way over what the AIP will pay you. If you think you're going to make money from the AIP by doing this, realistically, you have no plans of caring for the horse properly, and I would urge you to not adopt. These horses have already been through hell, and they should only be adopted by those who want to go the distance with them. Other things to note, you can only participate in the AIP four times a year. And if you reassign the animal to someone else, you are no longer eligible for the AIP and neither is the new owner. How to find an adoption event near you. It's simple really. Go to blm.gov, find the program's drop-down bar, click Wild Horse and Burrow, then click on the Adoption and Sales Event Schedule. And voila! And that's it folks. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop them down below. And if I didn't answer them in the video already, I will do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.